Hello, I am Ida Zhou, and I will be presenting on enabling security analysis of IoT device to cloud traffic. This work was done jointly with Joseph Turcott and Professor Lorenzo DeCarli, also from Worcester Polytechnic Institute. A quick outline of what this presentation will look like. I will start with the background and motivation behind our work, followed by the core technical approach we took and ending with our results. So to begin, I will start with the background and motivation behind our work. Transport Layer Security, or TLS, is used to provide communication security over a computer network. TLS provides end-to-end -end encryption, and you can imagine this as a box around the communication between your device, such as a smart speaker, and the server it's communicating with. End-to-end -end encryption benefits security because outside parties, such as a network intruder, cannot decrypt and understand the data being transmitted back and forth. However, this also means that users of these devices cannot interpret their data that their devices are sending. So as the popularity of IoT devices grow, so do the privacy risks. Stories of users discovering hidden microphones in their devices, microphones being always on without their command, raises concerns of user privacy violations. Because TLS enforces end-to-end -end encryption, there's no way for users to know what kind of data is being transmitted about them. So, a new approach is needed to better balance security and privacy, in which the user has more control over their own data. And this is where our work comes in. First, we designed and implemented a proof-of-concept system that provides the benefits of encryption while allowing network-based middleboxes to inspect traffic. We call this Inspection-Friendly TLS, or IFTLS. Second, we conducted a performance evaluation to observe the overhead IFTLS ads compared to TLS 1.3, the industry standard. Finally, we conducted a security analysis to identify potential vulnerabilities IFTLS introduces. There is existing work for inspecting TLS traffic, which influenced our design to adapt TLS to IoT devices. However, Many of these approaches introduce overhead and data granularity that is not suitable for the IoT environment. Instead, we adopted some aspects of each approach when designing our protocol. Multi-context TLS gives middle boxes read or read and write permissions specified for each context or flow from these devices. This is too elaborate for our approach. We use a granularity at the device level and only allow reading, not writing. Locks introduces the idea of sharing TLS session keys, which is an idea we use. However, LOCKS is designed to be used in an enterprise environment, which involves shared databases. IFTLS, on the other hand, is designed to be used in home networks. Finally, BlindBox inspects encrypted traffic first and then allows unencrypted inspection of traffic that is flagged. This introduces a lot of overhead and we have full decryption access instead of having an initial inspection. Before discussing our core technical approach, I will go over a summary of how IFTLS works. IFTLS gives users the ability to redirect their IoT device traffic through designated middle boxes with the help of an IFTLS manager. The manager routes the IoT device's traffic based on a user-provided access control list, or ACL. This dictionary maps IoT device MAC addresses to the middle box or middle boxes that will examine its traffic. More concretely, the keys are IoT MAC addresses and the values are a list of middle box IPs. You will hear more about this later. This diagram represents the second device on the ACL since its traffic is only being redirected to one middle box. In this diagram, there is one IoT device and one cloud based middle box that is in the IFTLS communication. Even so, please note that there could be any number of both in each device's routing rules are specified in the previously mentioned ACL. The middle box can also be within the home network if desired. I will go over the performance impact of having a middle box in the cloud versus locally later on in the presentation. The manager application is expected to execute on the local router. However, it is not required to and, for example, could reside on a specialized hardware device. IFTLS works by sharing the IoT device's read key, or session key, with the designated middle boxes. The write key, or message authentication code, is not shared with the middle boxes because the purpose of IFTLS is for transparency of data being sent and not modification. 
Next, I will discuss the core technical approach we took, starting with the initialization phase. There are four system components when using IFTLS. The client, which is a smart device whose traffic will be examined. The manager, which is responsible for configuring IFTLS and expected to run on the local network gateway, that is the router. Trusted middle boxes that the user delegates to inspect the IoT device traffic. And finally, the server, which the IoT device is communicating with. This example here is between one client and one server, but there can be multiple devices, and they would all go through the same manager. I will now go through the initialization procedure for each of these components. Starting with the client and the server, this is the first initialization that will need to happen for IFTLS. First, they establish a TCP connection, and the following negotiations will be very similar to TLS. After the TCP connection is established, the client and server agree on the Cypher suite to use and the server verifies itself using its certificates. The client then creates a pre-master secret which will be used to derive the session and MAC keys and encrypts it with the server's public key and sends it to the server. The server receives the pre-master secret and both the client and the server will compute the session and MAC keys. Once that is done, the server will send an acknowledgement message encrypted using that newly derived session and MAC key to the client. The server is now ready to send and receive data through IFTLS. The client decrypts the message and verifies it and is also ready for IFTLS communication. The next initialization phase is between the client and the manager. The client shares a portion of the pre-master secret that is used to compute the session key with the manager over standard TLS. The pre-master secret is sent instead of the calculated key for a consistent packet length, and also because the manager does not need the calculated key. And the only portion of the pre-master secret that is sent is the part that will be derived into the session key. The part that will be derived into the MAC key is not shared because we want the middle boxes to have read permissions but not write permissions. Then the manager with this pre-master secret will share it with the middle boxes and these middle boxes will derive the session key or read key. And the manager shares these based off of an access control list provided by the user. This specifies what order the middle boxes will receive the traffic. The Access Control List, or ACL, is a dictionary with keys as the IoT device MAC addresses and the values as a list of middle box IPs. You can specify the order of the middle boxes based on the order they appear in the list. For example, the first device listed in this table is first being routed to middle box with IP 111 and then 1112. The last one, on the other hand, is first being routed to 1112 and then 1113. The device in the middle of the table is only being routed to the middle box with IP 1112. Since the IoT devices are on the local area network, we use the more stable Media Access Control addresses, abbreviated as MAC, in our ACL. These addresses are locally unique to each device and are assigned when a device is made. Because of this, an access rule can be set for a device even before it is installed. This enables the user to have all traffic, including the setup traffic, from a device be inspected. However, the possibility and implications of MAC spoofing will be discussed in the results section. I will now discuss the next phase of IFTLS. This is the data sending phase. This diagram shows a network of three devices and three different access rules. The manager looks at the access rules and redirects traffic accordingly. Remember that during initialization, the manager shared keys with the middle boxes also in accordance to these rules. So the middle boxes that are already on these routes already have the read keys. If access rules change, the IFTLS session will have to be reestablished. In this example, there are three different routes. One with IFTLS with no middle box, IFTLS with a local middle box, and IFTLS with a local and cloud-based middle box. For implementation of our protocol, we designed and created a Python library. This module has functions for each entity's initialization and data sending. We used an Amazon EC2 instance to hold the cloud-based middle box for our testing. Lastly, we used TinyCore VMs for the remaining components. 
The client and manager ran on one device with the server on another so that we could mimic a real IoT device connection across networks. This is a visual representation of what our implementation and testing setup looked like. We tested with the client and manager in one network and the server in another. The middle box was in an Amazon EC2 instance for the cloud-based middle box scenario. We also tested the performance with a locally based cloud middle box, where the middle box was in the same home network as the client and manager. Finally, we also tested a no middle box scenario to measure the baseline delay IFTLS introduces compared to TLS 1.3. Finally, I will go over the results of our work, including performance and threat models. The primary performance metric we measured was delay. We measured how long it took to establish an IFTLS connection under different scenarios, such as with a local middle box or with a cloud-based middle box. We found that the additional overhead imposed by IFTLS is negligible for IoT devices since a connection is not re-established very frequently. We also looked at round-trip times for data sending, by replaying three different IoT captures. We found that IFTLS produced similar round trip times to that of TLS 1.3, especially when there was no cloud-based middle box. The last portion of our results is the threat analysis. These are threats and limitations of our design. First, our design of IFTLS implicitly defines two access levels, no access or full decryption access. We chose this design because it allows maximum flexibility and minimal complexity to the middle boxes in deciding how to analyze traffic. For example, the middle box may need access to the entire flow in order to classify what is suspicious or unnecessary. Another design choice was that while the service traffic to the client is also sent over IFTLS, it is not routed through the middle box. This is intentional because our purpose is to enable users to view data emitted from their IoT devices. Data being sent from the server to the client is not as useful for this purpose. Our current model also does not perform middle box authentication. This choice, while reasonable if the middle boxes are either virtualized or running on the gateway itself, can be susceptible to IP spoofing. For these scenarios, IFTLS would need to be extended with middle box authentication capabilities. On a similar vein, an attacker may do MAC address spoofing. Doing so to imitate a known device gives no additional leverage as it would simply cause the attacker's traffic to be routed through middle boxes for analysis. It's also worth noting that the IFTLS manager never sends any confidential information to the IoT device. However, max spoofing may be performed in order to evade IFTLS. Similar to middle box authentication, device authentication would prevent this attack, but also add complexity and latency. So we leave this for future work as well. Another threat is denial of service. For a DOS attack, we focus on one aimed against the IFTLS manager, which we assume runs on a local router. Using IFTLS will not make a router more vulnerable to conventional DOS attacks than it already is, since IFTLS manager only performs lightweight dictionary lookups to the ACL, the vulnerability of a router to DOS remains roughly the same regardless of whether it runs IFTLS manager or not. It is also possible to launch a DOS attack on a middle box or server. However, those entities exist independently of IFTLS and thus are orthogonal to our work. This leads into our discussion on component security. The security of IFTLS depends heavily on the security of its components, the IoT device, the manager, router, the middle boxes, and the server. By virtue of adding middle boxes to a communication, IFTLS introduces inherent risks related to information disclosure that do not exist when using TLS. Adding middle boxes to the path increases the attack space that adversaries can exploit. However, the risk of compromising a well-established cloud middle box itself, such as one running on AWS or Google Cloud, is low. Finally, as IoT devices become commonplace, we expect that consumers of IoT devices will become more conscious of related privacy issues. Thus, Devices implementing features such as IFTLS will become more attractive to consumers, incentivizing manufacturers to implement these features. We would like to note that IoT data collection does have, in many cases, legitimate and useful applications. We do not intend IFTLS to prevent it. Rather, we want to encourage manufacturers to limit the scope of data collection to the strictly necessary and to be transparent about the nature of collected data. So in conclusion, 
While IoT originating network communications can benefit from encryption, it is important for users to be able to retain the ability to inspect the traffic that their devices generate. This paper puts forward an initial proposal to do so. IFTLS is a simple session layer protocol to encrypt in-transit data while ensuring user-controlled middleboxes remain able to inspect it. IFTLS is designated to be simple and generate very limited overhead compared to conventional TLS. It also advocates for data transparency in tandem with encryption instead of as a trade-off. Thank you. The code for this work can be accessed at this GitHub repo and we can be reached at this email address.